The theory of evolution is founded on the philosophical assumption that the origin of every system in biology can be explained without God. I repeat, atheism is a pre-drawn conclusion of evolutionary theory. Now you might hear things like methodologic naturalism or scientific materialism. These all mean the same thing a pre-drawn conclusion that the origin of every system can be explained without God. Now, I don't expect you to take my word for this. I'm going to present to you today statements by leading evolutionary biologists that attest to this fact. And also, if you examine yourself the arguments presented for evolution, nearly all of these arguments are founded on attempted disproof of God. Richard Lewinton, a professor of zoology at Harvard, stated, and I quote, our willingness to accept scientific claims that are against common sense is the key to an understanding of the real struggle between science and the supernatural. We take the side of science in spite of the patent absurdity of some of its constructs, in spite of its failure to fulfill many of its extravagant promises of health and life, in spite of the tolerance of the scientific community for unsubstantiated just so stories, because we have an a priori commitment a commitment to materialism. It's not that the methods and institutions of science somehow compel us to accept a material explanation of the phenomenal world, but on the contrary, that we are forced by our a priori adherence to material causes to create an apparatus of investigation and a set of concepts that produces material explanations, no matter how counterintuitive, no matter how mystifying to the uninitiated. Moreover, that materialism is absolute for we cannot allow a divine foot in the door. Now, Richard Lewinton in this statement is openly acknowledged that evolution is a religion. He is pre-committed to a belief system. He starts out with an unprovable assumption that materialism can explain everything, that God didn't have anything to do with the origin or diversification of life. And then he admits that an apparatus of investigation is set up that produces only material explanations. And he's willing to accept these claims, even if they appear impossible, because of his pre-commitment to atheism. Now, this is how all insurmountable obstacles to evolution are handled. If you present empirical evidence that evolution is impossible, you'll be accused of personal incredulity or lack of imagination. This is because there is a pre-commitment to naturalistic causes. As an example of this, the biochemist Michael Behe published a challenge to evolution in the 1990s with a concept he termed irreducible complexity. He cited the bacterial flagellum as an example, which has a remarkable microscopic anatomy similar to a motor with multiple integrated parts, including a rotary motor and a drive shaft with bearings. In addressing this challenge, Richard Dawkins acknowledged that he's not a biochemist and couldn't directly answer the challenge, but he then proceeded to ridicule Behe for his conclusion of intelligent design. Behe should stop being lazy and should get up and think for himself about how the flagellum evolved. Instead of this cowardly, lazy copping out by simply saying, oh, well, I can't think of how it came about, therefore it must have been designed. I hope you can see the severe error of scientific logic here. Dawkins is saying that a scientist should simply go with the flow and accept existing dogma even when plausible explanations fail. And notice here that he's accusing Behe of personal incredulity. Lazy copping out by simply saying, oh, well, I can't think of how it came about, therefore it must have been designed. Dawkins is saying that it's intellectually lazy to ascribe all impossibilities to God. Instead, they should be automatically ascribed to evolution. This proves my point. Evolution is a belief system. Skeptics are accused of lack of faith. I might add that Behe actually does believe in some aspects of evolution. He believes in a billions of year old earth. However, he doesn't accept all the mechanisms of evolution. He believes that some biologic systems are too complex and there must have been some sort of intelligent design. Behe is marginalized by the scientific community because he's not an atheist. It's not enough to believe in evolution. There is an adamant denial of any form of intelligent design whatsoever. So think about this. How can it be scientifically determined that there's no intelligent design? Again, this is nothing more than a belief system. Evolution is a religion. 
Now, if any of you still think that evolutionary theory is neutral regarding the existence or non-existence of God, consider the words of Ernst Mayer, one of the founders of the modern synthesis. Darwinism rejects all supernatural phenomena and causations. The theory of evolution by natural selection explains the adaptiveness and diversity of the world solely materialistically. This is a grotesque flaw of scientific logic. This is an admission of scientific fraud. Here's how we approach evolution. We'll start out by assuming that there is no God. Therefore, evolution is true by default because there's no other choice. So I'll pose this question. How can you claim to be a scientist if you exclude from consideration the only competing hypothesis? Now, this position is justified because it's claimed that God has been disproven through evolution. So we might as well ignore any claims to the contrary. Second of all, science depends crucially on materialism. That is, there is no supernatural that is affecting our experiments. A lot of religious people accuse us when they see this of saying, well, you're being really closed-minded because you're ruling out from the very beginning the presence of a god. And how do you know that? I mean, maybe there really is a god. And as a scientist, I have to say, well, maybe there is. That's a logical possibility. People say that we're being closed-minded when we say that we don't use God when we go into our laboratories and try to find explanations. But the reason for that is not because scientists have sat down in some big conclave and said, we're not going to accept any supernatural explanation. It's a result of experience. There was a time when people thought the only good explanation for the marvelous adaptations of plants and animals was God because Darwin hadn't come along yet. So then supernatural was part of science. But since then we've learned, as Laplace did, that that hypothesis doesn't work anymore because naturalistic explanations have supplanted them. In other words, it used to be considered scientific to consider intelligent design, but now the evidence for evolution is so overwhelming that there's just no point in even considering it. Now, another argument you're gonna hear is, we're not gonna consider God because there's absolutely no evidence for his existence. Listen to this statement by Richard Dawkins. Evolution is not a matter of opinion, it's a matter of fact. Uh, the, the, the evidence is as overwhelming as in the case of, oh, that the Earth orbits the Sun. Um, that's not up for dispute. If you read Dawkins' books and listen to his lectures and interviews, you'll hear a lot of philosophy-based arguments and ridiculous claims like this. But the evidence for evolution is unassailable. Now, the reason statements like this are made is to make up for the fact that there is no scientific evidence for evolution in the literature. As Professor Franklin Harold of CSU stated, there are presently no detailed Darwinian accounts of the evolution of any biologic or cellular system, only a variety of wishful speculations. Now, another claim that you're likely to hear is that science leads to atheism. What finally made me into an atheist was the realization that there was no scientific reason to believe in any sort of supernatural creator. And that came with the understanding of Darwinian evolution. So according to Dawkins, he became an atheist because of evolution. The idea of evolution was kicked around for centuries before Darwin was born. The greatest pioneers of science rejected evolution and believed in God. And many testified that their study of science led them to God. Now, Darwin posed a hypothesis, and he never claimed to have proved anything. Which is that when Charles Darwin published his Origin of Species in 1859, the world was, on average, a much more religious world than it is today. The world has become much more secular. And of course, his one book didn't have that much evidence. But within 10 or 15 years, the scientific debate over evolution was over. Darwin's book was victorious, and the international scientific community accepted that evolution was a fact by the 1870s. So why was evolution considered a fact by the 1870s when the evidence was so weak? It wasn't because of any scientific evidence. It was because it fit with an evolving worldview. Now, I want to point out some misconceptions that are common in the circles of academia. First, there is a false dichotomy of science versus religion. Materialism is often equated with science, and intelligent design is equated with religion. Neither theory is truly scientific because both theories rely on unknown laws that cannot be proven. 
The difference is this. Evolution denies the existence of intelligent design, and creationism is based on the conclusion that intelligent design was necessary in the creation and diversification of life. And the second point, evolutionists think that they're looking at facts and drawing conclusions, and those that believe in God are going on blind faith. So it's not the same as, as religious faith, which is, which is based upon no evidence at all. Actually, the opposite is the case. Evolution is based on hope, hope that their philosophical arguments reflect truth. And as far as religion being based on faith without evidence, this is a straw man argument. I don't know anyone who believes in God that doesn't cite evidence for his existence. It's commonly stated that the evidence for evolution is overwhelming. The overwhelming evidence is philosophical evidence, as you'll see in this next clip. Um, but the fields that support these are multifarious. There's paleontology, there's embryology, there's biogeography, there's field work, there's genetics, there's morphology. And all of these fields testify manifestly to the truth of evolution. I'll give you one piece of evidence if you can see it for evolution, which I use in my book, which is the presence of vestigial organs that are no longer useful. And one of those is the muscles that enable you to wiggle your ears. Now, those of you in the back of the room won't be able to see this, but I will attempt to wiggle my ears. OK. Not everybody can do that. I'm using the same three muscles to do that that cats and dogs do when they use their ears to orient towards sounds. The fact that we still have those muscles are, is evidence that we have a common ancestor with those species. Okay, we heard Richard Dawkins make the comparison of the truthfulness of evolution to the certainty of the Earth revolving around the sun. And now Jerry Coyne also says that the evidence for evolution is overwhelming. And to prove his point, he brings up the fact that humans have muscles to move their ears. And by making this claim, he's suggesting that it's undeniable that all the extravagant claims of evolution should be accepted. Why? Just look at humans, they have muscles to move their ears. Now, how is this evidence for evolution? If you challenge this, it'll be argued that God would not have given man muscles to move the ears because they would have no function. Therefore, they originated through evolution. Actually, no one has any idea how muscles evolved to move the ears of an ancestor. Think about the complexity of the organ of hearing and of all its intricate integrated parts. How did three separate muscles and nerves, which by the way are formed from different germ cell layers in an embryo, how did mutations luckily appear to result in a complex neuromuscular network to appear in the right places? Now, these are legitimate questions and they are unanswered. Instead, philosophy-based arguments are given. So why are these arguments so solid? It's because of religious commitment. This is a worldview. This is a zealous commitment to an ideology. Now, the religious flavor of evolution is evident in many statements made by evolutionary biologists. For, for example, I once wrote in the New York Times that anyone who doesn't believe in evolution is either ignorant, stupid, or insane. Now, that sounds like an extreme point of view. It's actually a factual point of view. So when you hear inflammatory, emotionally charged statements like this, this underscores what I'm saying. Evolution is a religion. In a highly acclaimed paper, Theodosius Dobzhansky, who was one of the founders of the modern synthesis, stated, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. Then in the same paper, the only evidence he cited were philosophy-based conclusions founded on a philosophical mockery of intelligent creation. Many evolutionary biologists adamantly affirm that evolution is not atheism, and they point out that many evolutionary biologists are Christian. For example, Kenneth Miller is a leading proponent of evolution, and he's also a Roman Catholic. Now, even though Miller is a Christian, he still believes in the mechanisms of evolution, that everything is undirected. Now, a person can have more than one religion, and some have figured out a way to believe that God exists, but somehow had nothing to do with the creation of life. I've personally spoken to a number of evolutionary biology professors who are Christian, and they teach at major universities. And when I press them as to what role they think God played in the creation, 
The universal response is a rejection of intelligent design. Their arguments are no different than those of atheists. Now I'm going to conclude this presentation with a quote from Michael Ruse, a professor of philosophy and zoology. I am an ardent evolutionist and ex-Christian, but I must admit, evolution is a religion. This was true of evolution in the beginning, and it is true of evolution still today. Evolution therefore came into being as a kind of secular ideology, an explicit substitute for Christianity. Thank you again for your interest in this presentation. There will be many more to come, so I invite you to subscribe to my channel.